The AR-15 is the most produced firearm in the United States. It's estimated that over 20 million units are currently in the hands of civilians and criminal gangs across the country. And it's considered the weapon that causes the most deaths in mass shootings in recent years. But have you ever wondered how this weapon is actually made? What makes it so popular? Well, today we're traveling to Georgia, home to one of the largest AR-15 rifle factories in the world, where more than 600 units are assembled every hour, ready to be sent to specialized stores, shooting ranges, and distributors worldwide. So get ready because you're about to discover how the preferred rifle of millions of Americans is mass-produced. Let's begin. Step 1. Design and Materials It all goes back to the 1950s, in the midst of the Cold War, when Eugene Stoner, an aeronautical engineer, created this revolutionary rifle for the Armalite Company. His objective was clear – to manufacture a weapon that was lighter, easier to maintain, and more accurate than any other of its time. This is how the Armalite Rifle Model 15, or as we all know it, the AR-15, was born. Years later, Colt bought the rights and developed the M16, the military version that became the official weapon of the U.S. Army. But the AR-15 didn't stop being manufactured. On the contrary, it became a model exclusively for civilians. In fact, it's so easy to modify that a civilian can convert it into a tactical weapon in less than five minutes, and its price of just $800 makes it accessible to practically anyone. Two key materials are used to manufacture this weapon. On one hand, aircraft-grade aluminum, which is used in the main body, making it lightweight but resistant, and on the other, hardened steel, used in the barrel and internal parts, capable of withstanding friction and extreme temperatures. It's literally the same type of steel used in airplane wings. These materials arrive at the plant in solid blocks. Once there, operators sort, cut, and store them according to their use, ready to be transformed into one of the most manufactured rifles on the planet. Step 2. Forging and Component Manufacturing With the materials ready, the transformation begins. In the foundry room, the blocks of hardened steel are fed into enormous industrial furnaces exceeding 1500 degrees Celsius. Once melted, the metal is poured into molds that shape the barrel, bolt, trigger, and other internal mechanisms. When the pieces cool, they pass through high-precision automated lathes, where the barrel channels, chambers, threads, and every millimeter-perfect fitting necessary for everything to work perfectly are carved. Meanwhile, the aircraft-grade aluminum is transferred to CNC machining centers, where two key components are manufactured – the upper receiver, which forms the top part of the rifle, and the lower receiver, which forms the bottom part. Basically, these are the two halves that make up the rifle's body and which will later be joined to house the firing system, the magazine, and the stock. In parallel, other fundamental parts such as triggers, safeties, and firing pins are produced, all made from hardened steel. Magazines are also manufactured, with a capacity for 35.56 mm caliber rounds, constructed from reinforced polymer with a calibrated internal spring to feed the weapon without interruptions. Every single part, from the barrel to the last firing pin, is individually inspected to ensure that no microscopic defect compromises the shot. And with all the parts manufactured, verified, and calibrated, it's time to join them and form the firing system and internal components. Step 3. Assembly of Internal Parts With each component ready, one of the most delicate steps in the entire process begins – the assembly of the internal mechanism. This work is mostly manual, performed by specialized technicians who, using precision tools, place each part in its exact location. Operators attach the barrel to the upper receiver, ensuring it's perfectly aligned. Then they install the rotating bolt, gas tube, and recoil spring, key elements for the weapon to automatically reload after each shot. Meanwhile, in the lower receiver, other operators assemble the complete firing system, you have trigger, hammer, retention pins, and safety. Every element is adjusted to the millimeter. If something doesn't fit well, the rifle can malfunction, jam, or even accidentally discharge, endangering the user or those around them. When both halves of the rifle are fully equipped, they are joined by two main pins, forming a functional AR-15 ready to be tested. Before anything else, the weapon is tested without ammunition. The trigger response, proper hammer strike, and smooth operation of the entire system are verified. This rifle can fire more than 700 rounds per minute without deteriorating, so every adjustment must be perfect. 
If something fails, the rifle returns to the workbench. But if everything is in order, it's time to apply the exterior finishes and make it look like a true AR-15. Step 4. Exterior Assembly and Finishing With the internal system working perfectly, it's time to dress the weapon and give it its final form. First, the stock, front grip, and handguard are attached to the rifle's body. These elements are not just aesthetic. They are key for stability, control, and comfort when firing. Next, the upper rail is installed, where factory sights and mounts for tactical accessories go. And here lies one of the big reasons why this rifle is so popular. Its level of personalization is practically unlimited. You can put everything on it, laser sights, flashlights, suppressors, special grips, extended barrels, and dozens of other accessories. Literally, it's like a Call of Duty weapon, but in real life. Then comes the turn of the finishes. Instead of paint, the rifle is immersed in a special chemical solution that gives it its characteristic matte black color and makes it much more resistant to corrosion, friction, and wear. Some models include laser engravings, personalized serial numbers, manufacturer logos, or special editions with camouflage and tactical colors. When this phase is complete, the rifle is finished. But before it goes out into the world, the most demanding moment of all awaits, proving that it can fire without failing even once. Step 5. Firing Tests and Quality Control Although the AR-15 is already assembled, it's not yet ready to go out into the world. First, it must pass the most demanding tests of the entire process, demonstrating that it can fire with precision, safety, and without failures, even under extreme conditions. Each unit is transported to a specialized firing range within the factory. There, expert technicians load the weapon with real ammunition and begin the tests. Several full magazines are fired to verify that the chamber ejects casings without jamming, that the trigger responds instantly, and that the barrel maintains accuracy even after continuous bursts. In parallel, all safety mechanisms are evaluated. The rifle must not accidentally discharge if dropped, if not properly assembled, or if the trigger is not pulled correctly. But that's not all. Some units are pushed to the limit. They are subjected to high temperatures, humidity, dust, mud, and even submerged in water and fired immediately upon exit. The objective is clear, to ensure it works even in hell itself. At the end, a thorough visual inspection is performed. The finish, color, texture, magazine fit, and even the sound of the mechanism when operated are checked. If something isn't perfect, it's corrected, and if it can't be fixed, it's discarded. Only those that pass all these tests without fail are ready to advance to the next step. Step 6. Numbering, Cleaning, and Packaging With all tests passed, the AR-15 enters its final phase. The first thing is to laser engrave its serial number, right on the lower receiver. This unique code allows tracking the rifle's exact origin, production batch, and final destination a key detail for legal control, or for future investigations in case of theft, trafficking, or criminal use. Then, the weapon is partially disassembled for a deep cleaning. Powder residue, burnt oil, and small metal shavings left over from the firing tests are removed. Each component is cleaned with special brushes and lubricated with high-quality oils, designed to reduce wear and protect the rifle from the first shot. Once clean, it's reassembled and stored in its individual case. Depending on the destination, the package may include extra magazines, maintenance kits, tactical accessories, or security locks. Each week, a single factory can produce and package up to 10,000 rifles, a figure that clearly demonstrates the massive scale of this industry. With everything ready, the cases are grouped into reinforced boxes and prepared to be shipped to thousands of distributors worldwide. Step 7. Distribution and Current Situation with the AR-15 completely assembled, tested, and packaged, only one final step remains – getting it out of the factory and into circulation. From logistics centers, thousands of units leave every week heading to specialized stores, shooting ranges, or distributors that supply the entire country. Some batches travel escorted in armored trucks, while others are sealed in containers that cross entire states by air or sea. A single factory can produce more rifles than the entire active arsenal of countries like Peru or Bolivia, which highlights the massive scale of this industry. The destination of these rifles can vary greatly. Some end up in collectors' display cases, others in the hands of sports shooters or private security companies. Although, unfortunately, many escape the legal circuit and become involved in shootings, robberies, or armed conflicts. 
In some areas of the country today, it's easier to get an AR-15 than a passport. This reality makes it clear that the real problem isn't its design, but its availability. That's why we must never forget. The AR-15 is a weapon of war, redesigned for the civilian market, and every shot it fires can change a life forever. To conclude, tell us, did you imagine this entire process? How did you know about this weapon? Leave us your answer in the comments. And if you like this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe, and hit the bell to not miss the next factory tour.